Um, we serve a good God, don't we? Amen. Amen. This verse, this, this passage is my life passage. Uh, I want to just kind of explain it to you real quick and just why it's such an important passage of the, of the Bible mm -hmm. for me. Um, when I was 15 years old, I lost the man that I admired and that I looked up to. My father uh, had gotten sick and, and had two massive strokes. Um, while he was in the hospital, uh, a dear friend of ours and a deacon from the church had brought this passage to me just to, to help me see that God was there with, uh, with me and my family. Um, although my dad was still living after that point, the, the one that I looked up to and his ability to be independent and to be able to be a provider for his family was no longer there. But what I saw throughout the next um, 12 years of his life was how God used him, even in his illness, even in his disability, God was able to use him as a vessel and use him as a witness to others. And so when I looked at this verse and when I when the deacon brought it to me, I had no idea that it was going to carry me to this day. No idea it would carry me for 35 years, 35 plus years of being my life verse. It carried me through his illness. It carried me through his uh, sickness. It carried me through his death uh, when he died in 2001. But as I look back and I look at my own life, God has carried me through this all. So um, I want to read it and, and we want to uh, discuss. <clears throat> but now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, people in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring you offspring from the east, excuse me, I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Bring out the people who are blind yet have eyes, who are deaf yet have ears. All the nations gather together and the people, peoples assemble. Whom among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring their witnesses to prove them right, and let them hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor, nor shall there be any after me. <coughs> Lord, as we uh, open, as we study your word, I pray that uh, your word would just fill us, knowing that you are a great God, that you don't leave us stranded, you don't leave us in our own suffering and in our despair, but Lord, that you are walking right beside us and at times you are carrying us. I pray that we would hold true to no matter what we're going through in our lives whether it be sickness, whether it be death, whether it be uh, despair. Lord, that we would be assured and we would feel your presence with us in those times. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.
So as a 15-year-old boy, I didn't know any better. I, I was going to school, I was involved in church, and just to see the man that I, you know, that, that raised me to be the, no longer the man that I knew. And, and I look at that, and I'm, <clears throat> it was more, it was harder for me to watch my dad lose his independence than it was for me to worry about anything else because he was the second oldest of eight. He was the patriarch of his family because my grandfather was not around. And so that independence started even when he was a teenager. And so I saw what I thought to be a shell of a man until I trusted in God to carry us through that situation. And I watched how God used him to regain some of his independence, but more importantly is that how God used him as a vessel to be able to share with others that God is always there. He was able to be a witness to where people that they thought their life was over or they were going through some struggles but they could see God in him and see the light of God through him to where they knew that God was there with them. And so as we look at this verse, for me, again, as I said, I, I never thought how I would see God carry me through uh, my life and how he has been with me ever since understanding that God called me to ministry at 16 and then detoured me into a ministry and a, and a life and a career of being in the military I saw even in my tough times in the military how God carried me through it says again just in um, verse 1 fear not for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. Again, it talks about back before that, and again, it's talking about Israel, but again, he, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you over Israel, fear not. I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. Uh, the term fear not is used in the Bible 365 times. God wants to remind us we have nothing to fear. Because he has called us. And we look through Israel, we look through the struggles that Israel had in the fact that God called them by name to be his people. And we watched and provided, or we watched as we saw how God provided for them, he protected them, he was present with them in the tabernacle, he continued to walk with them and and loved them, he never he never abandoned them. Yet we we see the continued progression of God providing Israel rebelling. God providing Israel rebelling. I was talking earlier in, in Bible study and how the Bible, the first three chapters of, of the Bible in Genesis is how God created us and established a relationship with us. And then at the fall, the rest of the Bible is about how he continues to pursue us. How he loves us, that he has provided ways for us to atone for our sins. He's provided the support that we have needed. He has provided for uh, forgiveness for uh, King David and ultimately that he knew before the earth was created, that he would send Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. That he loves <coughs> that much. When we look at the passage in Isaiah, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. Just the, the visual of those words 
in my own life, I can definitely experience, I've definitely experienced just the overwhelming of suffering in my life or overwhelming just feeling that I'm being overwhelmed at times. Whether it be by my own decisions or by opportunities that God has given me to go through, the feeling of drowning or the feeling of being overwhelmed, the feeling of being burned, yet he was there with me in the entire time. And the, when the when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. The, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego comes to mind is that they were th thrown in the fiery furnace because of their faith in, in God, that they would that they refused to bow down. So they were thrown in the fiery furnace. The story goes on to say that they were dancing in the furnace, and God was right there with them. <clears throat> And they came out unscathed. Amen. Someone who looked like the Son of God is what it says. That is true. Yeah. That is correct. Um, we look at, as the passage goes on, from the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. We see that. Again, the, the 400 years of slavery that the Israelites went through in Egypt. Again, the slavery and the and that they continued to go through in Babylon. But God brought them through it. He saved them. He ransomed them. He, because He loved them so much, He wanted that relationship with them. They were His people. <clears throat> And he was not going to let anything happen to them because he loved them that much. I love the nautical terms uh, in this passage uh, because we look at, again, I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, to the south, do not withhold. When we think about how far the north is and how far the south is, how far is it, is it is? Is it from east to west and it's never ending? We think about in, in my own life, where I've been in my life, uh, across the world, being in the military and, and from just some, some darkest places, uh, some fears of, of my own, fear of losing my life. But God was there. His saving grace, His love for us is unending that he goes to the end of the world for us and he will always call us back to him again when we look through this passage again the terminology and it just everything is showing us what he will do for us there's nothing that he can't do there's nothing he won't do and when we think about this in our own lives, all of us are called to go through some type of suffering. <clears throat> and some of that suffering is hard. Uh, for me, several instances in my life are just wondering how I got through it. Because in the midst of it, I was in total despair. When I was in the Middle East, I went to the Middle East knowing and being prepared that I wouldn't come back. I had to do that for myself and for my family because that is what allowed me to be effective into protecting myself and protecting the people that served under me. Knowing if I didn't come back, I'd be in heaven. But even in the last five years, watching how God has worked in my life and in my wife's <coughs> life, from losing a job 
to a cancer diagnosis, to cancer treatment, to recovery, to getting us to a point where God has healed her, God had provided everything that we needed, the church became the church, we saw the church be the church, and freely and willingly give money to us so that we could pay bills. And as prideful as I wanted to be, I couldn't. I was humbled. I was joyous <coughs> because we had people that loved us so much that they were walking beside us in our darkest times and we had no fear. Hallelujah. When we look at who God is, we look at why we were created in His image. We know as, the, as verse 7 says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. We are his people. We are his created people. He formed us, he made us, he made us in his image, their image, to have a relationship with him. But more so, is that is that we have a God that loves us so much that he, he will never leave us. There's nothing we can go through in this world where God won't be there. He's talking about in the last uh, couple last couple of verses, he's talking about again the nations that all the nations gather together, people assemble. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring their witnesses to prove them right. Let them hear and say it's true. <coughs> We're living in that time right now. We have people in this world that are trying to declare and show us their gods or their lifestyles or their way of living. We are being silenced in sharing and being able to share the gospel. But the reality of it is that God calls us to Him in our darkest times to be a representative for Him. Not that we're going to become God, not that, not anything other than how He has spared us, how He has brought us through our times, and we use that as a witness to the world. I can't tell you how many people that my wife has shared the gospel with in her cancer diagnosis. How many times that the Holy Spirit has opened the door for, for me to have a conversation with people uh, sharing the gospel because of what we've gone through. Uh, for those that were here last week, uh, my wife, God gave her some of the best hair after chemo and conversation after conversation after conversation, people come up to her and that is how that conversation starts. And she gives all glory and all credit to God because he healed her and he brought her through. Another example for um, just this passage is a close friend of ours from church was diagnosed three or four months ago with three brain tumors. Healthiest woman that I've ever met in my life. And she was pretty much given about six months to live. There, she had one surgery to get a, one of the tumors, but the other two were inoperable. So they were going through uh, <coughs> treatment, 
They were going through experimental treatment, honestly, at MD Anderson and Houston, praying that something, they would have some type of hope. Their, their faith, their hope in God never wavered. And I can honestly say, I've, in my own life, I've never experienced this. I've experienced God healing my, my wife through medical or through medicine. But I have never seen in my life where God has miraculously healed somebody. They went back to MD Anderson this week. She was having seizures and wasn't sure what was causing the seizures, but it was pretty, um, the seizures were pretty extensive that they were putting her, putting her down just recovery wise for at least a week or more. They did a scan this week on Wednesday and the doctors cannot explain it, but the tumors are gone. Yep. Yeah. God did not leave her when she was going through the waters. When she was going through the fire. God was right there with her. We serve a great God. We have a God that loves us so much that he goes to the end of the earth to call us back no matter where we are in our life. From the time, times that we've struggled and walked away <coughs> to the times that we need him most because of things that we are going through, he is always there. A. W. Tozer who is a brilliant theologian, says, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. The most important thing that we can think about God is how much He loves us and how much He is there for us and how much He cares for us and how much He is willing to allow us to put the burden on Him and let us take his yoke. Because we're not called to go through suffering by ourselves. We're not called to take that burden on ourselves and just walk alone with it. God created us for community. God created us for a relationship with him. God created us for community in the church. He created us for community outside the church so that we can walk along e alongside each other and take on each other's burdens and pray for each other and help each other and be there to be, to, to listen or just to sit there when somebody's crying and, and doesn't know what to do. All we have to do though, and all those examples, are showing God's love to those people. More importantly is giving these individuals hope. Our witness that we do, the examples that we go through in our suffering, uh, the example for me is the battle that I've had with PTSD since 20, 2014 because of my time in Afghanistan. And God has been and walked me through it. He's carried me through it in my darkest times to the point where I'm at today and I'm sharing my story with other veterans. I'm sharing my story with other individuals with PTSD and I'm giving them hope because God gave me hope and carried me through it. If you're going through something and you're struggling, don't hide it. Don't try to do it on your own. Because we're not made for that. There are 
people that love you, that want to help, because they want to share God's love with you and help you walk through the things that you're going through. The, the suffering that you anybody goes through is not wasted. But it is something that God has chosen you specifically to go through that for His glory, for His testimony. And again, we're not called. We're called to love each other and walk with each other. It's hard. Uh, I, I can say that from my own experience because there's times that I've tried to do it on my own and failed. Every time I failed. But I'm walking proof that people cared about me enough to be able to walk through it because they showed me God's love. Our identity is in Christ. Our identity is not in our disability, it's not in our suffering, it's not in our loss of a job, it's not in a job. Our identity is in Christ. That is our foundation because he tells us to fear not because he's with us. He's called us by name. And we are his. There was a... Uh, Again, I work, I work with students and anywhere from teaching 7th and 8th grade individual or 7th and 8th grade um, Bible classes to working with high school students all the way up into junior and senior, high, uh, senior individuals. It is a challenge, <laughs> but I love it because this is God, where God has put me. And as we had our Disciple Now weekend for our students, and I saw God move through that place, and the Holy Spirit touched lives to the point that we've had, we had over 100 decisions for Christ this weekend alone. There was a song that came to me, a song that we sang, and just the lyrics just kind of washed over me. The song's Goodness of God. It says, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing, oh, the goodness of God. I love your voice, you've led me through the fire. In darkest night, and you are close like no other. I know you as father, I know you as friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, and it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrendered now. I give you everything, O oh Lord. With my life, all my life you have been faithful. You've been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, I'm going to sing the goodness of God. Our God is good. No matter what we go through, our suffering, he is always there. And I pray that for myself and for each and each and every one of you that those lyrics will wash over you is that God walk, is walking with you through the fire because He is a good God. When we look at the last passage, or the last part of that, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and you're my servant who am I, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I 
our God is the only true God. And we are his witnesses. Again, he's chosen us. And we not, should not and have not despaired. We'll leave you with <coughs> one thought. Things you pray for is what you trust God for. But what you don't pray for is what you think you can handle on your own. Prayerfully, God calls us to be holy. God calls us to, to be with Him and have a relationship with Him. And He, all He wants is for us to give Him everything. Our burdens, our joys, our despairs, because He is a great God. Let's pray. <coughs> God, I thank you for your word that you are our Savior. Lord, that we look at our life, a life that you created, a life that you formed, for us to have a relationship with you. And Lord, that there's nothing that we can do that will cause you to walk away from us. There's nothing we can do that will make you love us any more or love us any less because your love for us is unending. And Lord, as we allow these words of Isaiah just to speak to us and we see the goodness <coughs> of God, Lord, I pray that we would be able to give everything to you and lay it at your feet. You will strengthen us. You will give us wisdom. You will give us courage and boldness to push through the hardest times of our lives, knowing that you will use it for your glory. Lord, we know the end of the story. We know the end of the story. And Lord, you've promised us a mansion in heaven. More importantly, Lord, you, you've promised us a life with you. And we thank you for that. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen.